Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I wanted to talk about one of the most basic things in creating contact scripts, and that's adding knobs to the user interface. This is kind of like the most basic thing you might want to do with contact scripting. This was my first project, and uh, I think it's a good place to start. Okay, so the instrument we're going to be building today is uh, a Korg Volca Keys Sawtooth Sample Synth uh, Patch. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Korg Volca Keys, it looks like this. It's a tiny little uh, analog synthesizer. It sounds okay. It's a little bit noisy, but it's a really great um, sawtooth wave sound that you can uh, bring into your uh, DAW and manipulate and do all kinds of cool things with. So let's do it. So I've got uh, Contact up and running here. And you'll notice, by the way, that I'm using an old version of Contact. I'm using Contact 5.3. The reason for that is that if I were to use the latest version of Contact, which right now is 5.8, they're about to release Contact 6. But um, if I use Contact 6 or 5.8, that means that nobody is going to be able to use my instrument unless they have 5.8 or 6. Um, basically, you can only use uh, instruments with a later version of contact. So if I make it in 5.3, which is like, I think from 2014, that means that like anybody who has 5.4, anyone who has 5.5, anyone who has 5.6, they can all use my instrument. And by the way, you'll notice that there's almost nothing different between 5.3 and 5.6 or 5.8. So this is really just a way of them trying to get people to upgrade. Okay, so first I'm gonna make a new instrument. And here are my samples. Open up the mapping editor, grab all my samples, bring them in, and they've all been numbered according to the MIDI note number, so I don't really have to do any work here. Make sure that auto mapping is actually happening. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I already have an instrument what I want is a cutoff knob. Contact has some pretty good digital cutoff filters, so I want to make use of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Instrument Insert Effects, and I'm going to add um, Filter Low Pass Ladder LP4. I don't know why I always use the ladder version of the filter. There are a bunch of different algorithms that they have. I think the ladder one sounds a little better, but that you know I could be crazy. So an interesting thing to know here is I'm adding this to the instrument insert effects. I could just as easily have added it to the group insert effects. Basically, instrument is the top level. An instrument has a bunch of different groups. This particular instrument has one group, so it doesn't really matter where I add it. So I'm going to add it to the top level instrument group. Now let's try to play a note. Much, much softer. Okay, so that's what we want. But what we want to do is have an actual UI that we can control and have a knob up top, just like fancy professional libraries. So how do we do that? Scripting. So first I can get rid of the browser. We're done with that. And we're going to go into the script editor. So we go into the script editor. Right now there are five slots for scripts. They're all empty. We hit edit. Okay, so let me explain a little bit about how scripting works in contact. Um, first, everything is organized into callbacks. Callbacks are little blocks of code that get executed when different events happen. So maybe the instrument starts up, that's an event. When a note gets played, that's another event. When a knob gets turned, that's a third kind of event. All of these get handled by blocks of code called callbacks. What we're going to do is we're going to create a callback called onInit. OnInit is a block of code that gets uh, executed every single time uh, the instrument starts up. So uh, I'm going to do on, init, end on. Okay, so this is the architecture of like a standard block. All blocks start with on and then the block name, and they all end with end on. So we can write some code here, some code, some other code. As soon as the instrument starts, What's going to happen is some code and then some other code are going to run. Of course, that's not valid syntax, so that's going to, if I hit apply, I'm going to get an error. But what happened there was it tried to run on init and it failed. Okay, so we're going to delete that. And by the way, there's a really um, complete manual that came with your contact, so I'm going to show you where that is. If you look here, this is your contact directory. There's something called KSP Reference Manual. That's 
what you want. So we're gonna open that up. And you can see there's a page about on in it. And what's really useful about this document is it's filled with code. And just like the code we're gonna be writing today, you can kind of just copy and paste a lot of this stuff and it works wonderfully. So if you haven't already explored the manual, definitely should. So we're gonna go back to our contact patch and there's our on in it. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to define a performance view. So a performance view is the space that shows up in a professional contact library where all the knobs show up. So uh, if you don't tell contact that it should show a performance view, it won't. So the way we do that is by typing a function called make perf view. Hit apply. And right now we don't see any difference, but if we were to close edit mode, you'll notice there's this weird chunk of space right here. That chunk of space is the performance view. That is the canvas on which you're going to draw your knobs. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set a height. So set UI height three. Now that number three, that's an arbitrary number. Um, basically all of the performance view stuff is in either pixels or in grid units. The grid is a kind of weird arbitrary thing that was defined when they initially made contact. And you're gonna definitely wanna do some trial and error to try to figure out what's the right size for your instrument. So let's stick with uh, three for the time being. I mean, we can always make it shorter or longer or whatever. By the way, any of these functions can be looked up. So if I go back to this guide, and there's tons and tons of uh, example code, by the way. Oh, and look, here's a useful piece of an example code. Let's, let's just grab this and see what happens. So it made our performance view taller, obviously, because we changed set UI height from three to six. Let's set it back to three. It also renamed the script. The script is now called performance view. Before it was blank. I'm not 100% sure why you'd want to do that. Now message is an interesting function. Message allows you to print a little message in the bottom of the contact window. So if I were to say YOLO, hit apply, it printed YOLO. I don't want it to say that, so I'm just gonna go back to blank. And it's not so stupid to actually initialize your script by blanking out that little space because maybe you had another instrument loaded that said something else. So you reload the instrument, you blank out the space. It's a good idea. Okay, it's time to add our knob. We do that by calling declare UI knob. I'm gonna show you the guide for that. Okay, there you go. Declare UI knob, variable name, and then open parentheses and then three parameters. So let's just copy this over and we can fill it in as we go. So declare UI knob, then we have variable name. Variable names all start with um, a dollar sign in KSP. So we're gonna call this cutoff knob. I always like to put the, the variable type, which in this case is a knob, uh, as part of the name because otherwise I might get confused. Okay, it has three parameters, min, max, and display ratio. For the vast majority of your knobs, you're gonna have min be zero and max be a million. A million is the largest number that a knob can produce, zero is the lowest. So, zero. And display ratio is one, which basically just means that the knob is going to display exactly what its value is. So, we hit apply and up there, you'll notice our knob just showed up. By the way, if we close the edit mode, our knob is there also. So this is just an exact mirror of what's happening out there in the real world on your performance view. Okay, so you'll notice one thing about this. There, there are a bunch of things that um, stink about this. One of them is that the numbers go up to a million. That doesn't make any sense for a cutoff knob. The other is that the labels all cut off. Okay, so we wanna rename that knob. We're gonna use a function called set text. Okay, so here's how set text works set text variable text. And because we've declared this variable cut off knob, we can now reference that knob. So we're setting text on cut off knob and the text could be anything we wanted to, something. We hit apply, it says something. Of course, we don't have a lot of room to work with. Okay, so we have a cut off knob, but it doesn't actually do anything. So now let's make it do something. So in order to make it do something, we need to make a new callback block we're gonna use something called on UI control. 
What that does is it defines a callback block for whenever the knob gets moved. So we're going to copy this over and you can see here the syntax is on UI control open parentheses variable close parentheses. So just like all other blocks it ends with end on and we know that the variable name is cutoff. So we can use that message function, the one that we learned about above and actually just print out the value of the knob and we, that way we can see that it's working. So hit apply and I move this and if you look down here way at the bottom we can see that those numbers are updating so we know the knob is working we know that the callback is working so we can get rid of this now okay now we want the knob to actually do something so we're going to use something called set engine par this is one of the most used functions in all of contact programming this is a thing that actually sets the parameter values so we're going to grab this and we're going to fill it in one slot at a time Okay, so the first uh, thing we have to enter into this function is parameter. These parameters are kind of like little tokens that reference different parts of contacts internal workings. There's a full list of all of the parameters at the end of the KSP reference manual. We are going to be using something called engine par cutoff, and I'm just gonna paste it in there. Okay, so now what do we enter for value? Well, we need to get our value from that cutoff knob. So we're just gonna actually enter cutoff knob where value would go. And now here we have group, slot, and generic. And this um, is something you're gonna see in a bunch of different contact um, functions. This is how you reference different parts of the engine down here. So group references which group you're working with. And all of these lists are zero based, which means that the first group is zero, the second group is one, basically, all of the numbering starts at zero. Now, remember when I said that I added my low pass filter at the instrument level and not at the group level? That's kind of important right here because I don't have a group. I did this outside of groups altogether. So I enter negative one. Negative one is what you enter whenever you don't have a value for group, slot, or generic. Okay, so slot is which of these spots your effect is on. And again, that's a list that starts counting at zero. So the first slot is zero, second slot is one, third slot is two, ours is zero, so we're gonna enter zero. And then finally, what is generic? So for this, we actually have to go back to the guide and we're gonna look at what it says about generic. This parameter applies to instrument effects and to internal modulators. Well, ours is an instrument effect, for instrument effects, the parameter distinguishes between insert effects and send effects. Well, ours is an insert effect, and it says to use one in that case. So we're gonna put one there. So that's it, we filled in the, the whole function. So we're gonna hit apply. Okay, I'm gonna turn this all the way down and we're gonna go down and see. Okay, it turned the cutoff all the way down. Now I'm gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna turn this all the way up. We're gonna see, did the knob go all the way up? Yeah, the knob is all the way up. Okay, great, it's functioning. So in theory now, if I play it, okay, we have a functioning knob, except what about those numbers? Those numbers have nothing to do with anything. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna set that cutoff knob's label. We're gonna use a function called set knob label. Set knob label, and what it takes is variable and text. So let's say variable is cutoff knob, and let's say we wanted to just make the text anything. So I hit apply, anything. Okay, that's not very useful. We actually want it to equal whatever this knob says. So what we need to do is we need to actually pull the display text for that knob. And we do that using a different function called get engine par disp. So let's pull get engine par disp's function signature. And here's what it looks like. Parameter, group, slot, generic. This looks pretty familiar. This is almost exactly the same um, parameters that are required for set engine par. So the first one is parameter. Second one is group. In our case, that's gonna be negative one because we're outside of groups. Zero slot. And generic is once again gonna be one. Of course, if we leave it right here, 
we're getting the display value, but we're not actually doing anything with it. We're setting the knob label, and what we want to do is we want to take the results of that display parameter call and put it into the value for set knob label. So we're going to hit paste, and there we've got basically a function within a function. We hit apply, and look at that. It's actually showing the value. That says 1.4K. Down here it says 1.4K. So there's something that still needs to be done. If I hit apply again, it goes back to zero. So there are a couple of reasons for that. First, this function call that actually sets that label is only getting called when we move the knob. So we actually want to copy that over to the init block so that it gets called as part of the initialization as well. Okay, so there we go. But you'll notice something else, which is that the actual value is jumping down there. You can see the little knob. Every time I hit apply, it goes back down. And that's because this parameter is not persistent. It's not saving that value. We want to make it persistent, and we do that using a function called make persistent. So make persistent. And this is something you need to declare once on the initialization and never again. So, and now we hit apply. Knob always stays at the same value. So now we have a fully functioning cutoff knob. It works exactly like you would want it to. So, of course, we have this sea of white space here. What are we going to do about that? I'm going to use a background that I made a little bit earlier. Okay, so that's the background. The background's pretty cool, but the cutoff knob is in the wrong place. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually move the cutoff knob. And we do that using another function called move control. So after we've declared it, we can do move control cutoff knob. And this is all going to be grid-based units. So I'm going to move it over three units. And then I'm going to hit apply. Also, I think that this UI is kind of taking up too much height. We have one knob. We don't really need all this space. So I'm going to make this only UI height 2 and hit apply. Now let's say we want to make another knob for resonance because those kind of come in pairs. I'm going to call this res knob and do exactly the same stuff. Basically just copy the whole thing over. Um, I'm going to move this knob to the left. I'm going to move this knob to the right. And you see where it says engine par cutoff? We're going to just change that to resonance. So, and we can go down here and just like we need a callback block for cutoff, we need a callback block for resonance. So we're just going to copy this, paste it, and res knob, res knob, res knob. Resonance. So we hit apply. Oh. Okay, there we go. We've got a cutoff knob, we've got a resonance knob. Does it work? Perfect. So as you can see, the first block of code is the hardest. Everything after that is just kind of copying and pasting and changing a couple little things here and there. We could add ADSR controls, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's futz with these knobs a little bit. Look at that. Beautiful UI. Okay, I'm going to put a link to this in the description for the YouTube video so that you can download it and see how the coding was done. And also, the samples are actually pretty good. Um, if you've been enjoying these videos, it would be great if you'd hit the little subscribe button. Take care.